Good afternoon, everyone. Ben Espinosa again here from the DCA's Grants Administration Division. I am joined by my colleague, Brenda slaughter Reynolds, and we thank you for taking the time to join us on this Artists in Residence uh, grant webinar. Um, we're going to spend the next 90 minutes or so going over this grant program. First half of it will cover the, what the program is about, who it's for, who's eligible to apply, what the program means to do, what, what constitutes eligible projects, what constitutes competitive projects. And then we're going to shift gears kind of in the midpoint to do a deep dive on the online application process. We're going we're gonna to present what the online survey monkey apply platform looks like as an opportunity to orient you with that platform, how it works, how it looks, and how you can navigate it. Throughout this call, I know folks are muted, so we can't hear you. Feel free to use the chat feature to share your questions. And then either myself or Brenda will pause during opportune times to address those concerns. Um, before I pass it on to Brenda to lead us into the first portion of the presentation, um, I'll just provide a bit of framing. We are submitting applications now that are due by October 30th for potential project activities to take place in the year 2021, July 1, 2021, going all the way into June 30th, 2022. So we're asking folks to picture a world where COVID-related constraints are far less stringent as they are now, with the hopes that we can all gather in the traditional way, having our arts workshops presentations in person all together across the city. All right, so without further ado, I'm gonna pass it on to Brenda to lead us to the first person portion of today's presentation. Brenda. Thanks so much, Ben. Welcome, everybody. For the first part of this webinar, I'm gonna go over the Artist in Residence program. The second part of the webinar will be Ben showing you in the uh, SurveyMonkey Apply platform how to utilize this application and apply for the program. So let's start with what is the Artist in Residence program? This program is to support individual artists in providing community-based and participatory projects in self-selected non-arts venues throughout the city of Los Angeles in order to gather, collect, and inspire audiences who may have little exposure to artistic and cultural opportunities. This year, Department of Cultural Affairs is going to support between 15 and 26 AIR projects, which will be a minimum of six weeks in duration. That will be five workshops and one culminating public performance. In addition, we're going to include three to five artist residencies to take place specifically within social justice organizations based in South Los Angeles. For this program, you will apply for the AIRSJ program. Each grant is going to be approximately $6,000 and it'll be awarded for your residency for five workshops and one culminating event. In addition, this year, three grants of approximately six to $10,000 will be awarded for AIR CARES residencies. And this is to provide high quality art services for homebound older adults. This is a deliverable arts project. This is not a teaching workshop project. All projects will take place, pardon this, it will be July, 2021 through June, 2022. So let's go over a little bit of the eligibility for these artists in residence programs. The eligibility includes individual artists or collaborative duos, teams, and ensembles under the leadership of a single applicant. For an AIRSJ residency, an applicant may be an individual artist or may be a prominent employee of a nonprofit organization. That means if you are a dance ensemble and you have a, um, a program that you would like to teach as an artist in residence in a community that normally wouldn't receive those services, you are eligible to do that. All AIR grantees must be current residents of Los Angeles County and must demonstrate through your resume at least two years of the experience instructing participants, participants in, the, in the proposed artistic discipline. The proposed residency involving a relationship should include one non-arts host organization. And to be specific, your residencies should not take place at cultural centers, dance studios, music studios, any school that's offering arts programming, 
Your host venue should be a, an organization or a venue that is non-arts focused. We also allow special constituencies. For instance, if you wanted to teach at a continuation high school or a juvenile detention facility or a um, uh, another social service organization, you are eligible to do that and we do encourage that. All projects for the AIR program can be should be consistently attended by approximately 20 individuals. We understand some communities are very fragile and would not be able to have consistent attendance. However, it is the goal to have the workshops uh, skill building to be attended by the same individuals. So this year we spoke a little bit earlier about the AIR CARES residency. And here's a little more information about that program specifically. The CARES service residency is a program of approximately two or three grants, approximately six to $10,000 each. And this is for art services that could be delivered with the free meals available over the phone or available on the internet. These are arts deliverables and not workshops. Selected care services will be legally contracted to provide approximately 12 to 20 works over approximately six to 10 weeks during the grant period. For the AIR CARES residency, you must show a seven year history of working professionally in the discipline which will be the topic of your concept for the CARES residency. So these are going to be, let me give you an example. It would be poetry delivered on the placemat that the senior receives with their meal. This could be a guided meditation over the phone. These artworks will be citywide. The Department of Cultural Affairs in conjunction with the Department of Aging will be responsible, <coughs> excuse me, for the duplication and delivery of this art service. The AIR and AIRSJ residencies funds can be used for community projects held in accessible facilities. As I mentioned earlier, unless special permission is provided by DCA staff or residency to be in a limited access venue, such as a domestic violence shelter, juvenile detention camp, and the like. The residency funds can also be used for sustainable activities and projects that emphasize the creative process, community participation, creative thinking, skill building, and result in at least one free or low cost public presentation. Now to that end, these are skill building workshops. These are not professional training workshops. These are not to create professional dancers. These artist residencies are to engage community that usually does not receive any arts services. So for these, these artist residencies, you really wanna think about project themes that emphasize a connection between creative thinking and the skill building within cultural issues and how it's gonna impact the participants to understand the art form and to develop it creatively through the process of the workshops. Here's a couple of examples of culminating events. These flyers are uh, usually done by the artist in residence. This one is through a women's veterans center. This again was a restricted uh, community. This is experience of stories told through movement, art and writing. This is the culminating event flyer for a poetry workshop for the LGBTQ Senior Center. And this is an AIRSJ culminating event, DocuStories, a very empowerful uh, immigrant community storytelling workshop. So there are some restrictions on the AIR funding, just a few of them. 
AIR funds cannot support individuals who live outside of Los Angeles County, individuals enrolled in a degree or certificate program during the grant cycle. If you are getting a certificate for uh, professional development of some sort, please be in touch with us. You may qualify still. Past grantees who have not successfully completed their DCA contracts within the past two years or projects to be hosted by organizations or festivals, which DCA already funds. Applicants whose past and or current development is chiefly affiliated with one or more nonprofit organizations that provide the same or similar community services, unless the applicant is applying under the AIRSJ category. For instance, if you have a dance development project you would like to do in South Los Angeles with a social service or a, a social justice organization, please be in touch with us and make sure that could qualify. So in addition to this specific program, there are also things that the Department of Cultural Affairs does not fund. We cannot fund events that are closed to the general public unless special permission is granted, for instance, at a shelter. The purchase of depreciable assets, if you're applying to the AIR in residency to buy a new computer, I'm sorry, that won't be eligible to be uh, funded. DCA does not fund cash prizes, competitions, awards, hospitality, or food costs, including travel or accommodations. Please be mindful if you are inviting a master artist to teach a class that that would be the cost of your artist um, revenue yourself. Uh, DCA does not fund projects that are primarily religious in nature or content. That is not to say you can't use a church as your venue and we do actually encourage you to use a church. They're great venues for this project. DCA does not fund projects at public schools that do not include at least 14 hours of workshops and one after school or evening assembly to which the public is invited. Schools mm -hmm. by and large are not the best host venues for this program. So host venues, very important part of this program for AIR and AIRSJ. The AIR CARES partnership does not require a host venue. That partnership is gonna be with the foundation and the Department of Aging and collaboration and arts project will be decided there. For AIR and AIRSJ, you will need a host venue and your, height, your host site should have the shared goals with the project, not already providing similar services. They should commit to donating time and space and provide safe services in a site that's ADA compliant. And your host venue should understand how best to coordinate a program that will be attended by recruited individuals and other community members. If you are relying solely on your host organization for your participants, you should be mindful to make sure that that meets the guidelines of having 20 participants per workshop. So, do we have any questions about host venues? Nothing's coming up at the moment, Brenda. Okay, thanks, Ben. So we'll move on. So your application goes through several stages. So once your application is received, we have to take a look at all 15 council districts. Our goal is to have an artist in residence within each council district. To that end, we allow you a first choice, second choice, and sometimes third choice. If you don't get your first choice, you shouldn't just select your second choice randomly. Very often, you will get your second choice. We have some very overserved arts districts, and those are very um, competitive applications. If um, you are randomly selecting a second choice, please be mindful that you may get it and you would need to find a host venue in that council district. So it'd be wise to go ahead and look all over and make some plan Bs and plan Cs. So each application is ranked for funding based on the panel score and the council districts to be served. So as I said, in multiple cases, each cycle of selected grantees may be asked to move their project to another council district. So the judging geographic 
distribution for Department of Cultural Affairs is divided into overserved, underserved, mildly served. Council mm -hmm. districts two, three, six, seven, eight, nine, and 12 are most historically underserved. Mildly served are council districts 5, 10, 11, and 15. So you'll see that there's a couple missing and those are the overserved council districts. We encourage you to apply anywhere in the San Fernando Valley and South LA. Those are the areas of great need for artists and residents. For artists and residents SJ, there is a specific geographic area that would be in council districts 8, 9, 10, and 15 south of the 10 freeway and north of 228th Street. We have tools within the application and our website to check addresses to see which council district they fall. So please be mindful when applying to have your host venue for your first choice, but also have in mind a host venue for your second and third choice. So your application components, this shouldn't be a very difficult application. You have your cover sheet with your contact information. You have your project narrative, which you're going to line out I'm going to do five dance workshops, one culminating event. Here's what they're going to learn. Your timeline, I'm going to do it in the spring when we can utilize the outdoors, et cetera. Your current chronological resume, and if applicable, any collaborating artist resumes. This means if you're bringing in a master artist or you're teaching as a duo, those resumes should also be included there will be an estimated project budget. This is auto-populated, and when Ben gets to the application itself, he will show you exactly what it looks like. This should be a $6,000 budget. This is a $6,000 grant. It's not a matching grant. So show us how you're going to do the five workshops and one event in $6,000. You should also have your host venue organization letter. This should accompany your application. This is your first choice for your host venue. We're looking far into the future. It may be hard to get a venue recommendation at this time. Be in touch with us if that's an issue. You should also include artistic work samples. You have to demonstrate two years of teaching what you plan to do. So you should have some work samples demonstrating that. In addition, you can fill out, you can um, upload some supplemental materials. These are gonna be your outside voices talking about your excellence in your profession, your work, your style, and other, other outside voices such as reviews or samples. So this is our timeline. So right now, in case you haven't, go ahead, apply on SurveyMonkey Apply. There's the, the link, it's also on our website. You should fill out and submit your online application by October 30th. That's the last Friday of this month, the day before Halloween. And then you will receive, thank you for your submission email. With that, it's gonna be a application attachment. You're gonna print out your application and you're gonna mail it to our offices. Please mail it to our offices no later than November 4th. You can print it out and mail it as soon as you finish your application. Please do mail it and do not go drop it off at our office. Our offices are closed to the public at the moment, even the lobby. So here's our timeline all together. Right now you're in the workshop. You're gonna have your online submission by October 30th. You're gonna postmark the hard copy to our offices by Thursday, November 4th then we must wait for the city budget approval before we can make award announcements. So the notification of results will be in the May-June timeframe. Once the announcements are made, we contract right away, May-June timeframe again. And then the proposed project service period begins July 1st, 2021, and goes through June of 2022. Here is a snapshot 
of our website and the drop down menu to apply is highlighted there with a the red circle. You all found your way here today, so I imagine you're familiar with this page and we look forward to getting your application. So without further ado, I'm going to turn this over to Ben and he is going to lead us through our application process itself. Thanks, Brenda. As I set up my, my screen share, it's a good time to type in any questions you may have for us at this point. We can get to those. Okay. Any questions coming in, Brenda, or should we move forward? I have no chat. Okay. So if you follow that link that Brenda shared a moment ago, it'll take you here, dca-la.smapply.org. This is DCA's um, online platform for SurveyMonkey Apply. It's what we use for our, as our application program for our various grant programs. So um, if this is the first time you're visiting here, the first thing you're going to want to do is click on the green button up on top, the register button. Provide some brief information about yourself. Make sure to register as an individual because the AIR grant program is a grant program primarily for individuals, um, and and you can register this way. If you applied for this program in the past, you may be familiar with a prior application platform called Fluid Review. So uh, the SurveyMonkey Corporation purchased Fluid Review and has now folded it into SurveyMonkey Apply. So the good news, if you have applied in the past, you should be able to register rather log in using your prior login credentials. So if you've done this before, you may want to try logging in with your old email and password to see if it, log it gets you in. If that doesn't work, um, feel free to register for a new account. That will be just fine, too. So let's to get familiar with how SurveyMonkey Apply works and looks, let's log in with a little test account I created and see how it works. When you log in for the first time, your all applications window will be blank because you haven't applied for anything yet. To start a brand new application, you're going to want to scroll up to the top under the Programs link, where you'll see the available programs that you can apply to. We're talking today about the Artisan Residence Grant Program. To apply, you're going to click on the green More button, and there will be an application button here that says Start New Application. I've created one already, though, that's pending that we can look at together. So once you've started a new application, when you go into your My Applications button up on top here, you'll see all your pending applications. Let's take a look at what the Artist in Residence proposal looks like. Think of this main page as your checklist for your application. It includes all the various tasks that need to be completed before you're able to submit. Um, for this program, there's uh, nine items here that we're looking for that will comprise a complete application. Survey Monkey Apply helps you keep track of your progress by um, providing a quick little icon showing your status for each one. Something that you've completed, you've filled out and completed, is marked by a green check mark. Something that you haven't started yet is, uh, is indicated by this uh, kind of grayed out circle icon. And finally, something that you've started but haven't quite marked as complete is denoted by this half moon green icon. The bulk of your proposal will be this very first item, the actual application form itself. And all of these other items should take far less time to complete and prepare. So let's jump in to the very first item, the Artist and Residence application form. I'm going to jump to the very first page of my application here. Pardon me. Actually, I'm going to mark this as anytime you're working through your various application components and you've marked it as complete. You can always go back and make edits if you haven't submitted yet. And to do that, there's this green, not green, this uh, three dot, dotted icon looking thing. If you click on that, you can click on edit. It will take off the complete, completed mark and allow you to make changes. Um, just what I'm doing here is I'm going to the very first page of this so we can start from the beginning. So the application form consists of four quote-unquote pages. The first one is what we call the cover page, very basic information about you and your project. The second page is a uh, more information about some more key details about your project as well as your host venue. And then the third page is a series of narrative response questions. And if it's applicable, a quick 500-word pitch as a fourth page for a care services application. 
Our goal with this new care services pilot project for those who are applying for that is to make it a super simplified process. In part because we're very much early on planning stages for it and, and awaiting a potential collaborative uh, partnership with the National Dental for the Arts. So we want to make it simple for those who are pursuing a CARES project. And for a CARES project, all we're basically asking is for this first page basic information about you, um, a copy of your resume, and the 500 word pitch in this page four. So you can see if you're pursuing CARES only, only the first page and fourth page applies to you. If on the other hand, you're pursuing a traditional AIR project or an AIR social justice focus project, the very page one, two, and three will apply to you. We've structured this so that you can first, uh, you, you have the option of pursuing an AIR project or a AIR SJ project. You can, or you can just do a CARES project only or do a combination of both. Before proceeding, I always advise folks to download a Word copy of all the questions that await you um, so that you can save a, a Word version of all your responses. It's good record keeping for yourself, as well as you can take advantage of the copy editing tools of a Word processor. Take advantage of spell check, grammar check, and word counts in particular. So my advice is if this is the first time you're seeing this, you can stop here and you know download a Word version of these questions so you can prepare those offline. And then once you have all your prepared responses prepared in advance, you can log back into your account and simply copy paste your responses here. Let's assume you've done that so we can proceed. Uh, first question is uh, your legal name. Who, if a word a grant, who will the city of LA be contracting with? Um, and, and provide a professional name if that's different from your legal name. Mailing address. Make sure it's somewhere within the county of Los Angeles because that is an eligibility requirement. Uh, you can provide us an updated residential address if your mailing address is different. So question six asks you to tell us uh, whereabouts LA County your home residence is. So if you live within the city of LA's boundaries, you're gonna be in one of 15 city council districts. So it's important for us for you to indicate to us where your home is if you're within the city. If you're outside of the municipal boundaries of the city of LA, um, but are still within LA County, that's totally fine too. For example, you may be in the city of Culver City, you may be in the city of Santa Monica, you may be in an unincorporated part of LA County like Altadena, and that's okay. We have this last box for you, you can you make that indication here. To, con to double confirm where you are on the LA County map, you we provide this link to LA City's Neighborhood Info tool. If you click on that, it'll open up this page we are able to enter an address. Let's punch in DCA's office address here, which is at 201 North Figueroa. If you enter that information and you click Find, the website will prevent, present a variety of information. Um, notably, the one we're, con we're concerned about in this case is the city council area. So you can see that's, that the Department of Cultural Affairs office is located in District 14 within the city of LA. If you punched in an address and it doesn't give you any results, that means you're not in the city of LA, but and most likely outside of the LA city boundaries and somewhere else in LA County. Okay, so that's how you can double check what city council your your home is located in. This is fourteen in this case. Give us your contact information, phone, email, as well as your professional website address if available. If, you put, if you've gotten a grant from the city in the past, you probably have a Bavin ID number. That's a business assistance virtual network number, one of the various systems the city of LA uses to track our various grantees and community partners. If you have that number, please provide it. It's helpful for us. If you don't have it, you can leave it blank for now. Okay, so question 11 gets to the, telling us exactly what it is you're applying for. Are you applying for a traditional AIR um, residency? Are you pursuing an AIR social justice focused residency? Are you doing a, care, a CARES pro project proposal only? Or are you doing a combination of both of those? So what you select here will dictate what you'll see in the subsequent pages, so make sure you're selecting the right one. For our purposes, we'll do a combination of both so we, we get a chance to see all the necessary pages. And with that, we've completed the cover page of our application. So click on Next, and we'll see the next questions. So page two asks you to provide a little bit more information about the project you're proposing. Start, start off with a, by providing us a quick pithy title. 
um, be much more creative than I have here and provide something uh, a little bit more descriptive, such as um, week weekend basket weaving workshops for seniors in the San Fernando Valley, something like that. We're going to ask you to provide us your project start and end date. Uh, the big window that we are cons we're asking you to stay within is this grant period of July 1, 2021 through June 30, 2022. So that's a 12 month period. Projects should not last 12 months. We're asking you to be more specific about when your project will take place. If you're if you're envisioning, you know, a, a six to ten week residency taking place in the in the fall winter of 21, for example, um, please enter something like October 1, 2021 to December 31, 2021. Most projects under AIR will not span much more than six months. Um, the idea being, you know, the 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 spirit of these programs are are sequential skill building arts opportunities for the community. And we find that the, that the most productive learning experience takes place in, generally speaking, on a weekly basis. Um, so if we're seeing the five or six, week, six weeks of uh, workshops and, and, and a culminating event soon thereafter, after that last workshop. So generally speaking, most projects will, take, will be completed within 10 weeks. OK, so question 15 asks, you to tell us which council district your 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 dream first pick host venue is located in. So this is where your workshops are going to take place, and this must take place in one of the fifteen council districts within the municipal boundaries of the of the city of Los Angeles. So um, once as part of your conversations with uh, one of your part of your early conversations with your prospective host venue, double and triple confirm where your host venue um, is on the map, and where those workshops will take place. And you're going to want to enter their address on that neighborhood info tool to confirm which council district they're in. Question 16 and 17 asks you to tell us about your alternate plan B and plan C host venues. So um, as Brenda alluded to earlier, um, across our 15 council districts, we have a number that are arts generous, generously served. And they're generously served because lots of artists um, pitch residencies there as well as they're, they're generously served because there's a number of arts institutions and, and organizations who are already embedded in those communities. So um, part of the strategic decision-making you as applicants will need to make is if your dream host venue is in one of our arts generously served council districts, for example, council district 13, which is the Hollywood area, council district 14, which includes portions of downtown, like areas adjacent to where you know, Disney Hall is, Music Center, where arts institutions are stone throws away from one another, do expect a competitive, uh, a more competitive um, scoring experience. As compared to uh, applicants who are pitching residencies to take place in far-flung parts of our city, such as uh, Sun Valley, uh, Canoga Park, um, North Hollywood, or in South LA. Okay, so if your if your number one choice is in one of those uh, arts underserved areas, it generally has a better chance for getting a, your your first choice being approved. Um, if uh, if your first choice is a thirteen or fourteen council district, it will be probably more competitive, and it's important to have backups that may um, may that may be in more of our arts underserved areas. Okay, so similarly, you can use the neighborhood info tool to double and triple confirm the address of your second and third choices so you can indicate where they fall on the map for us using those questions. 17A asks us asks you to share with us the name of your number one choice. You can enter that name here. And 17B is related. It asks, uh, asks you what your plans are around general liability insurance. One of the requirements the city of LA has with our grantees and that could be, you know, a multi-million dollar nonprofit organization or an individual artist, is that you are able to show us um, evidence of general liability coverage um, during your approved project period. Um, many of our artists and residents are able to negotiate in their conversations with their host venue opportunities for the host venue to add the artist as an additional insured under existing policies. That's an opportunity for you to save on that as a potential save on insurance as a potential project expense. Absent your host venue's ability to add you as an, as an additional insured, 
know that we're going to ask for you to show us um, evidence of liability insurance for proof of a grant. And, you, and it's, it may be something you want to bundle into your project budget, which we'll talk about momentarily. Um, address for your host venue here, as well as in some basic information about your project engagement, of your planned project engagement. We're going to ask for your approximate date of a culminating event, generally you know, a week or two after your final workshop, um, planned workshop. Um, and this is an event that we expect, generally speaking, that our artists and residents will be marketing and promoting to the general community um, so that you can maximize your audience numbers. As Brenda noted, there's some special um, considerations made for residencies that take place in special um, restricted um, settings, in which case we would understand if you're at a juvenile detention facility, for example, it may be difficult to, to open up um, uh, the shared common space for the general public to attend. But generally speaking, our, with our AIR projects, we know our artists spend you know, five or more rigorous weeks learning with a very small cohort of pro program participants, 20 folks. Um, we, want, we want those 20 folks to be able to showcase the wonderful things they've learned through your program for the general public. As a municipal funder, we, very, we care very much about those opportunities for the general public to experience the arts. So it's important that that culminating event be marketed where possible to maximize, um, uh, maximize audience viewership. Tell us about the number of artists served by your project. Count yourself as number one. Um, and add any collaborating artists, any administrators that, you, that would be working with you, artist administrators working with you, um, any um, visiting artists as well. Participants, this is primarily your work, the folks who are enrolling in your weekly workshop series. Again, we expect that you'll have approximately 20 attending on a consistent basis across your workshop series. And then finally, the number of your projected audience. We generally expect around 40 or folks, 40 or more people to be able to participate in an audience as for your culminating event. Keep those numbers and expectations in mind as you, as you develop and frame your proposed project for us. OK. So the third page of the application is are all your narrative responses around your project. This is the part where it's very helpful if you've had these prepared in advance. In part because there are word limitations for these responses, a common applicant pitfall would be to copy and paste responses or to simply type in their responses directly on here. Um, you want to, when you're copying and pasting your prepared responses here, make sure that you are within these word limitations because SurveyMonkey Apply will inadvertently truncate any responses that, are, that, that exceed these limitations. So double check that when you're, when you're transferring your responses into these boxes. So the very first question is, the, is, is an important one. This is where we're essentially asking you for the technical specifications for your project. Give us your, this is, this is your two minute pitch basically of your project. This is going to be a, a six week uh, um, evening residency at a uh, multi-purpose recreational community center in Van Nuys to take place between you know uh, the the fall and the winter of of 2021. Um, we're going to partner with, with organization ABC. They're going to they're going to take the lead on reaching out to their constituents, maximizing enrollment. We're going to we're going to enroll you know 50, 60 individuals with the hopes that you know approximately half of those folks would be able to consistently attend. Um, we're going to cover a series of art making experiences over these topics, A, B, and C. They build, they, 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 it's a sequential learning arc that, you know, gets more rigorous as, as it goes on, and it's going to culminate in the presentation, so forth and so forth. Not an opportunity for you to put on your marketing hats so much as is a good opportunity for you to put on your, uh, like, lawyer, lawyer hat on and really emphasize very almost dry technical language. In 300 words, give us the tech specs for what your project will entail. Number two is when you will get, get a chance to brag about yourself, how you are a fantastic candidate to, to pull off this proposed residency. Tell us about your key qualifications, your experience in this artistic form, with your experience working with this proposed community, um, any special um, training, expertise, certification that you have to work with this. Good chance to brag about yourself. Don't be shy. This is, what, this is a perfect opportunity for you to, to, um, to sell and, and market your expertise. Question three asks you to tell us about the impact, short-term and long-term, that you hope to um, achieve uh, with this project. 
your, your goal here is to convince the panelists that a participant who, part, who joins your workshop at week one will have this transformative experience at the end of week five or six. Describe in words what kind of impact it will have on that person, what, that, what impact it will have on that person's uh, community, family, and friends, and, and so forth. Tell us about what we can expect to get as a community benefit out if approved for funding. Question four, ask you to tell us more information about the specific community that you're planning to serve. Tell us about um, their connection to this community. Tell us about your connection to this community. Tell us about the connections between your proposed workshop residency, the content of your workshop, why it's, um, it's culturally relevant for this proposed group of folks that you're gonna serve. Uh, panelists like to see those connections. Um, they like to see artists who, who who go into communities where it's needed, where it makes sense, where the content um, resonates and is relevant for the, the folks who are participating in the shops. So try, you're, gonna, you're gonna draw that connection between your experience that you described earlier and the participants and audience that you're describing. Collaborating artists, this is a chance for you to brag about them. Um, this is where, you, if you're applying as a duo, this is tell us about your collaborating artists. Um, if you, if part of your five, six week, um, you know, um, schedule includes a, a visit from a master artist that's relevant to your um, proposed, um, to your proposed workshop, this is an opportunity to showcase them as well. Question six gets at the nature and quality of your partnership with your host venue. AIR is really the success, the most successful applicants in AIR. Not just tell, not do not just tell us about. Um, um, your expertise and connections with your proposed um, project beneficiaries, but you really draw. You should really draw a picture of why of a of a, very, of a healthy, robust partnership between you and your proposed host venue. Uh, this is where you get to tell us about you know prior years of working together as an indicator of even further project success. Tell us about um, how your partnership and the division of labor between the outreach, um, participant solicitation, um, their involvement throughout your residency. Is it really, are they just letting, are they just giving you a room to bring in folks and for you to facilitate workshops? Or is it really more of a partnership throughout? And uh, if where possible, you wanna draw a picture where it's the latter. You wanna show that this is a robust partnership where you're working toward great community impact as well as the, the host venue. This is why it's so important that the host venue be aligned with the nature of your work and, uh, and, and with your proposed project. This is an opportunity as well, by the way, um, to, to in, in less detail, but still within the 300 word limitation, to tell us about your plan B and plan C. Um, it's helpful for the panelists to know, you know, if you're, if you're pitching a project in Hollywood, but there's someone else who scores higher in Hollywood, rather than saying, rather than us going back to being saying, sorry, um, you wouldn't fund high enough to be funded, this is an opportunity to show the panel, oh, but if this isn't funded, we have a potential project in an alternate venue in Council District uh, 2 or 12 that can potentially be successful as well. Okay, um, so question seven asks you to tell us about the atmosphere of, uh, of the workshops that you're planning. Um, as Brenda mentioned earlier, sometimes um, we see challenges in our AIR residencies around consistent attendance um, um, among project participants. This is an opportunity for you to alleviate any fears or concerns around that by telling us how wonderful of an artistic creative atmosphere you're gonna create to, in, to maximize consistent participation. And tell us how that is uh, specific to the, the proposed um, population that you're serving. We wanna understand that there's gonna be consistent at, uh, attendance and participation throughout your residency and that you're going to have a fantastic celebratory culminating event that maximizes you know, public participation and viewership. Question eight tells us, uh, will ask you to tell us about how you plan to monitor your progress as an artist in residence to confirm that you have, you have strategies and tools in place to, to confirm that your, your project is succeeding um, beforehand, during, and afterwards. Tell us about you know any pre and post of surveys you're going to use to track the impact of your of your workshops. We want to understand that you care as much about the success of your work 
in the beginning, and during and after. So you, you have strategies and tools in place to allow for any course corrections um, down the road. Also, get, also sets you up beautifully to report back to us at the end of your residency on, on what went well in your project. And finally, uh, give us a brief project timeline on uh, covering the, the arc of your residency series. You can use bullet point, well, bullet points here. You know, just just really draw it out. You know, in the fall, you know, in the month of, month of September, once you receive project approval, this is when you're going to do your project promotion solicitation with, in, in collaboration with your host venue. Give us the proposed dates for weeks for weeks one workshop for two and three and four and five and so on. When the culminating events going to take place, and, and embedded in in between there, tell us how you're going to market and promote not just enrollment but the culminating event. And in any kind of evaluation and um, surveying and interviewing you're going to do to monitor your work. A pair of certifications here, just confirming that everything you're entering is is truthful and accurate. You're going to do digitally sign this to give us that okay, and that will complete your the the, the application form for you for, for your traditional AIR or AIRSJ proposal. If you selected in the very first page, you're doing a CARES project proposal as well. There is one last page for you to do. This is where we ask you to give us a 300 word pitch for what exactly you, you have proposed, what kind of artworks you're going to create in collaboration with the L, with LA's Department of Aging, plus a 200 word um, pitch on how you're qualified and how your expertise is uh, positions you well for delivering that proposed work. So 500 words total, that's that's our ask from you if you're pursuing a CARES project. After all of that, you can mark this as complete. And then that very first item in your checklist will turn into a green check mark. Very satisfying to see that. And that will cover the, that concludes the bulk of your application. Any questions at this point before we move forward for the other items? Uh, ben, we had a couple questions back about where you can find the Word version. Okay. It's on so you, can, you can find the Word version of the application form if you click on that task. It's embedded in, the, in these uh, task instructions. Um, so here, in this very last sentence, there's a clickable link here. 2122 AIR application form. If you click on that, it'll download a Microsoft Word version of the questions that we just covered. We have more CARES questions, so we can address those when you're done. Okay. All right, so the second part of the application checklist is, the, is your project budget. So on this page, you can if you click on this link, it'll download the AIR budget form that we're asking you to fill out for us. There's also a sample AIR budget there for reference if you need some inspiration. But let's take a peek at what that budget form looks like. I downloaded it already. Let's take a peek at it. This is it. So this this outlines the key pro the, the key expense areas we see we would expect you to plan for as a, for a potential six thousand dollar arts uh, AIR residency. So the, the key areas where we're looking for is artist fees. DCA's primary you know focus for the investment of city funds is paying paying for artist jobs. So that's your time, your time in planning, your time in executing your workshops, and your time in promoting your activities. And then, of course, any um, art, any fees and salaries for collaborating artists, any collaborating um, administrators, and so forth. This is where you're going to outline those fees. Break it down for us so it's clear for the panelists to understand how you're arriving at your numbers, uh, your, your hours per week, times your your proposed rate of compensation, and then you're going to enter those under these columns. We're focusing primarily on this cultural affairs request column. This is the column that needs to total six thousand dollars when you're done, because that's the that will Cultural affairs request is basically your AIR grant request. Um, secondary budget expenses are your project materials. These are paints and brushes, paper, any, um, any other materials that you're going to be using in the, in, in the carrying out of your proposed workshop series. Marketing fees. This is the this, this is what you pay to for any. For any uh, support for getting the word out around your workshops and for maximizing enrollment and audience, any mark, any project monitoring and evaluation expenses here, 
and some contingencies. You can outline that here as well. Um, so this is not a matching non grant. So if you if you fill this out and the cultural affairs request is six thousand dollars total, you're good to go. But if there are other project expenses you want us to be aware of, um, you can do take advantage of this donating column. Maybe there's additional. Maybe you're, you're maybe you're the only way your project can be successful, or maybe you're pitching a ten week or twelve week proposal that requires much more artist time, guest artist time. This is where you'd want to outline those dollar values for us to understand. Um, also, um, Brenda outlined some things that DCA funds cannot be used for. For example, DCA funds can't be used to pay for any food, any um, travel, mileage reimbursement. Um, but what if you, when the part of your project involves, you know, um, after school snacks for your youth participants or you're visiting, you're bringing in a guest artist, then you, you, there's some travel expenses there. Understandable that those can be legitimate project expenses. It's just that DCA can't pay for it. So you may, if those are some things that you're going to pay for out of pocket or find other sources to pay for, you can include those expenses under the donated column. And if you do provide any of those optional donated um, contributions, do provide some brief notes here in the little text box below that you can share with the panelists so they understand what it is that those donated um, expenses are and where the funding sources will be coming from. All right. That's the budget form, so I'm going to close out of that one. Once you've saved your budget form, you're going to go ahead and upload that file here. Um, and then once it's uploaded, you can go ahead and mark this task complete. So one of the things we promised our care applicants is that we're, we're not asking for a project budget at this time. Instead of a budget, we're going to ask you to submit a, a certification form that looks like this. It's simply Ask, it simply asks you to double confirm for us that you're aware that at this point this is contingent on additional funding from the NEA. You're not asked to submit a budget now. Sign this, type in your name, save this on your computer, and then you're going to upload that in lieu of the budget. Okay. I'm going to mark this complete. I've fulfilled my budget. Let's go back to my checklist. Uh, next, next item up, this is applicable to everyone, including our CARES only applicants. We want you to provide your artist resume. And you can upload that file here. Um, make sure it showcases, you know, a minimum two years of experience with the art form you're proposing. Seven years plus if you're proposing a CARES-related project. Um, you're going to upload that here. Okay. Once it's uploaded, I'll mark it complete. Back to our application. Next up is an optional item. This is for any collaborating artist. So if you're part of a duo. This is where you'll upload their other the other artists' um, resume. If you have any guest artists um, and you want the panel to, panelists to know about their experience and, and expertise, um, this is an opportunity for you to upload that resume as well. But it's optional, so you can leave that one blank and grade out like that. All right, so the next item is applicable to our traditional AIR and AIR SJA applicants. We want a host venue letter from your your top choice number one pick. The, in, in this host's letter, in this in one or two pages, this is an opportunity for them to outline any outline the, the, the nature of the proposed partnership, what kind of space, time, and resources they're able to contribute toward the residency. Um, this is an opportunity for them to substantiate the proposed impact uh, of this uh, residency if it's approved for funding. And as well as their capacity to promote um, promote and ensure enrollment of approximately 20 or more applicant, uh, participants every week and their opportunity to promote uh, the culminating event to, get to amass an audience of 40 or more when the project is done. Um, CARES, applicants, CARES only applicants are not required to submit a host venue letter. Um, in fact, the uh, the collaboration won't involve a host venue if, if approved. The collaboration is primarily with DCA and the Department of Aging. So in lieu of submitting a host venue letter, you go ahead and upload that very same certification form you had uploaded for your budget um, in, the, in the prior task. If you want a copy of that form again, it's here. But for everyone else, a host letter is, requ is required with this task. OK. Next section, very important as well. These are uh, this is a request for artistic work samples. 
this is where you get to show off uh, I show off through either hyperlinks or through still images um, examples of your of, of of comparable work and residences that you're proposing um, take advantage of this time to showcase um, videos where possible our, our panelists like videos remember that they will be spending lots of time reading lots of words on the page or on the screen so uh, it's, a, it's a great opportunity for you as an applicant to give them a break from that and wow them with an inspiring video of for example uh, the last time your, your these workshops were carried out um, so with sharing work samples you have two options to go about this you can provide us either links to like a YouTube page, to, to a YouTube video, to a Vimeo video, to a, a website with, with, with instructions on how to navigate the website. Um, or you can provide up to 10 still images. If you're providing links, um, always a good idea to make them as panelist friendly as possible. And that is to say um, you want the panelists to click on the link and they'll see exactly what it is that you want them to see just by clicking on the link. No password protections. No scrubbing to time marker three minutes and 20 seconds and watching it for 10 seconds. Where possible, curate your link so that it's as easy on the panelists as possible to see it as what it is that you want them to see. As you're curating your artistic samples, remember that we advise our panelists to spend no more than around five minutes or so collectively on any one applicant's um, artistic samples. So refrain from providing links to like 10 minute plus videos and so forth. Keep them short. And, and, to the, and to the point. Um, and in terms of content, your goal here is to show the panelists uh, an experience of what it would be like to see your workshop in person. Um, avoid hyper-edited, super splashy, more like marketing-focused type videos, but instead aim for giving the panelists the, the experience of having been at the culminating ex event that you had last year or being a fly on the wall at one of your workshop sessions where you as a teaching artist is facilitating a difficult lesson and helping the participant understand the concept. So that's the way you should structure the links that you're going to share. If you're providing links, you can provide up to three. Take advantage of all three is my recommendation. Um, if you're gonna do still images, you can provide up to 10. Okay, and then the mark this is completed. Great. All right, so home stretch, folks. After you provide your work samples, a couple more optional fields here. Supplemental items. It's marked as optional, but you will want to take advantage of this. You have three very precious yeah, opportunities. I'm yes, so sorry, Ben. We have a question about supplemental materials. Perfect timing. Um, ben, can you go over supplemental materials again? It should include outside voices, as Brenda said, but can it also be a lesson plan or a YouTube video? of a workshop session for a few minutes or short online lesson. OK, so um, your goal with, with supplementary materials should, number one, be to provide an outside voice for how wonderful you are as an artist, how, how impactful your, your project has been in, in communities past. Um, le uh, so letters of recommendation, reviews, write-ups at local community you know, web blogs, um, uh, a, a testimonial from a prior participant's or a prior participant's family about how how transformative the workshop has been for them. Those outside voices go a long way in in, uh, in convincing panelists that your your your, your content and expertise and workshop is, a, is 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 of huge value. The secondary consideration when considering the supplementary materials are those things that just um, expand on what you've already provided in your narrative and in your artistic examples. So one example I heard in that question was providing a video of a workshop in session. That sounds to me more like an artistic sample and not so much a supplementary material. I would, if all things, are the, all things being equal, I would emphasize the opportunity to, to elevate an outside voice proclaiming their support for your work. And so you have three valuable slots here to, to use for providing supplementary items. Um, the, Again, reviews, letters of recommendation, testimonials. These can be PDFs. Uh, if there's a video testimonial, you can provide. You can provide. Oh, I can't provide links on this one. Um, if it's a video testimonial, you might want to provide provide the hyperlink on like a Word file. Turn that Word file into a PDF and upload the Word file. That way, you know, uh, panelists can download your supplements item and click on the link and see a video testimonial. 
for example. So um, yes, I, I would advise um, prioritizing outside, really compelling outside voices that substantiate the quality of your residency. And then secondarily, provide anything that expounds on the content you've already provided, either through your narrative or through your artistic examples. OK, after you provide, I've only provided one link here. Um, but you're going to be much more savvy applicants and provide uh, all three. You can take advantage of all three slots. Provide a brief description. Let's say this is a letter of recommendation uh, from prior participants. And then I'm going to mark that as complete. And after that, in your checklist, you have two additional items. And they're, they're primarily for us internally at DCA. Um, we ask you to submit an estimated service metrics form. This just gives us some more detailed numbers about um, project engagers, your work, the, the workforce that you're going to simulate through this grant, if approved for funding, um, socio-demographic details about you, about your participating artists, about your participating um, workshop um, community, and so forth. Um, this is not shared with panelists. This, we keep this internally at DCA. Um, we are very interested in understanding just how far um, these proposed projects will have an opportunity to go and, and, and serve our LA community. And the very last item is a quick feedback form for Brenda and myself. Gives us um, gives you an opportunity to share what went well, what was more of a frustration, difficulty throughout. You know, learning about the grant program, reading the guidelines, experiencing this webinar, completing it on survey monkey apply. Um, we like positive feedback as much as uh, critical um, recommendations for how to make this better as we strive to make this as, uh, as painless as, as it can be on a, year, on a yearly basis. So um, we appreciate your feedback. You that. Once you have all green check marks, that means um, this button will turn green and you can officially click on submit. It's a very satisfying experience to click on that green submit button. That will officially complete your online submission. What will happen after you click on submit is that you are going to get a automatically generated email from, from Brenda and myself, giving you the next steps for um, going back to your SurveyMonkey Apply account and printing the text components of your application. So you can go ahead and snail mail that to us. Um, and as Brenda asserted earlier, don't drop it off. Use the cheap postal mail. Uh, don't do priority mail, no need for that. Just first class postage to send it back to our offices so we can have a hard copy on file. And that will officially complete your submission. Um, with that, I'll, let's go visit some questions. So Ben, we have a question from Marzian. Uh, apologies if I didn't pronounce that correctly. Do you know if Bavin keeps our numbers from five years ago or if we have to get new ones? I tried logging in through my old number and it didn't register. Should I apply for a new one? Hmm. That, that, that sounds like a question for the Office of Finance, unfortunately. Um, if you were unable to log in using your prior credentials, um, at the LA Bavin website, you have the opportunity to, um, they should have some contact information there for the Office of Finance. Someone There's just because this year ago. It's unfortunately out of the purview of, of Brenda and my, of myself. Um, the good news is it's an optional field for the purposes of our application. So, um, I, we, I'm totally supportive of you kicking that can down the road. Um, it, and uh, if approved for funding at that point in time, we'll ask you to connect with Office of Finance to sort out your data and details. And if you would like, thank you, Ben. That was very helpful. Uh, just a little tip. They have the chip virtual assistant. No, a, a live chat feature, right? That's right. I, I found that very helpful and responsive. So if you contact them directly using chip, that may help. Yeah. Uh, so for other CARES questions, it's really just to address it overall. It is a program that is not teaching workshops, not held at a host venue. The artists who are selected, it will be two or three artists, no matter what discipline, it will be a limited number of grants for this program to start. Um, working in collaboration with the Department of Aging, with DCA, to flesh out the concept that you have submitted in your application for arts materials delivered to the seniors. This is not something where they will get a kit that they have to assemble or that requires any workshop type 
construction. So it's not a skill building workshop. It's quite separate from the artist in residence, artist in residence social justice. So it is deliverables worked out through uh, fully fleshing out the concept in the application and taken into production by the Department of Aging and Department of Cultural Affairs and physical delivery through the Department of Aging. Okay, uh, we'll do a last call for any uh, questions at this point. Do you know that you can reach Brenda and myself between now and our application deadline at dca.grants at lacity.org? Um, we are both working remotely, so email is the, the easiest and easiest way for us to get a hold of you and to address any questions. Um, but to get those questions sooner or later, um, it, it, our response time can, can, can suffer as the, the closer we get to the application deadline. So um, we appreciate questions sooner rather than later when we can. Well, thank you all. Um, I, on behalf of Brenda and myself, I appreciate you taking your lunch time to chat with us. Um, this is a, this is a great this is one of our favorite programs. It's an opportunity for us to put artists in various spots in our city where the arts are otherwise not are un, uh, less available. Um, we take great pride as one of the very few municipal funders across the country who are able to offer grants to individual artists. So um, we're thrilled about offering this opportunity to you. Thanks. Ben. Any closing remarks? Thank you all for coming. Uh, typed our email into the chat should you like to reach us after this and uh, we look forward to receiving your applications yeah thanks everybody thank you all right Brenda I will see you at the office right <laughs> okay all right bye-bye bye, -bye. bye.